So the Fatality motherboard brand has been reawakened. This is the P67 professional motherboard and it features a picture of Jonathan Wendell on the front as well as the Fatality logo. No, I'm just kidding. What it actually, fe well, it does have that. What it actually figures features is Intel's P67 chipset. It features a digital PWM design, a 16 plus two phase CPU power delivery mechanism. It has a Fatality mouse port. What is a Fatality mouse port? Let me see. So, uh, after plugging the USB mouse into the Fatality mouse port and running FStream, gamers can use Fatality's personal preferred mouse polling rate at 500 hertz. Okay, neato. Next we have uh, support for six USB 3.0 ports, two front, four back, and six SATA 3. We have three PCIe 2.0 slots supporting Crossfire X and SLI. So that is in three-way Crossfire X and up to NVIDIA Quad SLI. Mind you, by Quad SLI, they mean dual, dual GPU cards in two slots. We have premium gold caps. All the capacitors on the Fatality P67 Professional Series Gaming Motherboard are luxury premium gold caps. These 100% Japanese made solid capacitors are sleek, high gloss caps with a premium gold coating representing long life and stable performance. So you can see here we have a window into the box where we can see the motherboard itself. Let's go ahead and have a look at the oh, camera man wants to look at the board. Okay, that's okay. We're going to open it up, cameraman. Okay, so we can have a look at the back of the board where they actually call out. Wow, they actually do a fairly good job of summarizing the features of the board. I'm not going to look at it now. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open it up and I will use the box as a reference as I'm doing my usual guide of the board. So first, let's have a look at the accessories that we have here. Uh, let's just figure out the packaging. I've opened a few motherboard packages in my day, so I think I can probably handle this. There we are. Okay, accessories. Here we go. So we have a fatality setup guide. Okay, we have a fatal. No way. Okay, this is a quick installation guide. It's this thick. That's a finger for perspective. So this must have a lot of different languages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different languages. So the English section actually only goes to even then. Wow, geez. So they're guiding you through, I guess, a whole lot of different stuff on this particular motherboard. We've got a driver. Oh, oh, this is nice. This is handy. So they give you all of the pinouts of all of the important connectors on the board in a nice little color diagram here, and they clearly label them all. That's a nice touch. I actually really appreciate that right inside the front cover because as someone who's in installed a couple of motherboards in my life. That's usually the only thing I'm looking for inside a motherboard manual. So here's P67 Professional. So download the latest uh, off the Fatality website, I guess. I actually don't know. You go, know what guys, leave a comment. Uh, leave a comment on the video if you know what website to throw away the disc and download the latest drivers from, please. Okay, here we have a USB 3.0 back plate bracket. All right, we have an IO shield that is conveniently color coded and labels the fatality mouse port right here. Okay, next we have, look at this, IDE and floppy cables. It features IDE and floppy, go figure. All right, here we have some SATA three six gigabit per second cables, although I can tell you right now, there's likely no difference between these and any other SATA two cables, but there you go. They're certified just in case you were uncertain. We have a Molex to SATA connector. Uh, power adapter, rather. We have an SLI bridge. Yep, SLI bridge in there. Next, we have front USB 3.0. Oh, I get it how this works. So you can actually decide whether you want to use the conveniently included three and a half inch bay front USB 3.0 adapter, or you can take the bracket in here, install it in one of these, and have two more in the rear. That's actually a really clever, really flexible solution. I haven't seen that before. All right, let's get to the board itself. Hold on, I'm gonna make some room for a cameraman to uh, be able to get around here and see it. So the Profess One on All series board from Fatality. So let's uh, take in the overall look of this board. You know what, they've done a fantastic job with the red and black color scheme, black PCB. Uh, you know what, the gold, okay, the gold plated caps for all their excessiveness actually look really cool as part of the color scheme of this board. Like come in and check check those out. That actually that actually looks really neat. Okay, so let's do our overall tour 
of the motherboard starting with the CPU socket as I usually do. So here's your LGA 1155 socket. So bear in mind this has support for Intel Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 processors only on LGA 1155 socket. It does not support onboard video because this is a P67 motherboard. You'll need an H67 motherboard for onboard video or a Z68. Here is the 16 plus 2 pay phase power design that is around the CPU socket that's going to deliver nice stable power. You can see here that all of these heat sinks are actually swept back to provide a nice clear CPU heat sink mounting area so you should be able to mount pretty much anything you want on a board like this. Up here in the top in its ideal location we have our 8 pin CPU power connector. Moving along to the right we've got four DDR3 dual channel slots. So these are using easy installation uh, slots which means you only have to clip in the one side. So we've seen that on ASUS motherboards as well as MSI motherboards in the past. Here we have a 24 pin power connector in exactly its ideal location and we have an IDE connector and if I did have an IDE connector on my board this is probably where I would want it because I would probably be using an IDE optical drive up near the top of my case. This has a lot of SATA connectors I'll tell you guys that much. So here we have our SATA 2 so these are the 3 gigabit per second connectors and then we have 6 SATA 3 6 gigabit per second connectors. So these guys right here are running off of the Intel chipset and these ones are running off a third party chipset. You can see here there is a little notice for better performance and short boot up time we suggest you connect the hard drive that is your boot drive on ports 0 to 5 as your boot device. So these guys not these guys. You can use these for other additional things. Alright let's keep moving down the board and don't worry we're gonna get back and have a look at the uh, the heatsink cooling solution on this board in a moment. So here we have onboard power and reset buttons as well as a post readout LED. Love the these. these are very handy when you're trying to diagnose a dead RAM stick or a dead video card or something like that. Moving down we have our front panel connectors. We've got a ton of fan headers on this motherboard. You can just hook up like a whack of fans. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six fans that I can see. And I think that's uh, I think that's all we got, but that's pretty darn good. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, four USB 2.0 front headers, one USB 3.0 front header, and then we've also got a floppy connector for whatever reason we have that. I don't actually know. In terms of our, <laughs> you never know, you might need it. Okay, so we've got our PCI Express layout. Looks pretty good so far. Because this is a high-end board, I actually really like this layout. So if you're using a single graphics card, they're assuming you're putting together a build that might just still have a legacy PCI card. So you're gonna go ahead and use this guy. If you're using dual graphics in a motherboard like this, hey, odds are pretty good you don't need any PCI. So you can go ahead and still make use of this PCIe 4X slot even though it's a physical 6x, you can actually see it's only wired up to 4x. You can make use of this PCIe 1x slot and this PCIe 1x slot giving you five usable PCI Express slots total even if you're using a dual graphics card configuration. Now the cooling on this board is done in a pretty neat way. So you've actually got very low profile heat sinks on the chipsets and then you've got higher profile heat sinks connected via a heat pipe to those that are actually going to receive quite a bit of incidental cooling from whatever CPU cooling solution you're using. So you're able to cool the chipsets and keep everything very flat on the board which is convenient for installing graphics cards so you don't have anything in the way of these clips or anything like that and then you can actually do the cooling up here and keep it all centralized in one place. So let's go ahead and oh I missed the firewire port. Sorry there's a front firewire port as well on this guy. Alright moving along here. Back panel connector we've got Dedicated PS2 ports, which I actually like. I still like the PS2 port. You never know when you'll need it. We've got a clear CMOS button, optical as well as coaxial digital audio out, four USB 3.0 ports on the back panel, four USB 2.0 ports, dual gigabit Ethernet. We've got FireWire, eSATA, as well as 7.1 audio out. Now I'm actually just going to, because they list their... Uh, <laughs> Because they list their, uh, their, their features so neatly on the back of the motherboard box, I'm actually going to go ahead and tell you guys if I missed anything. So yeah, we've got full support for K-Series unlocked processors, which I did not mention before. And I think that's pretty much it. I covered it pretty well then.
Good on me. Oh, right, yeah. Supports up to DDR3 2133 dual channel on these slots. So, thank you for checking out my unboxing of the P67 motherboard from the Fatality Professional Series. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.